Hello and welcome. Error handling can be complicated to understand and to implement in your VBI projects. So in this video, I'm going to show you a simple way to implement a solid error handling strategy for your own VBA projects. Now in the last video, I covered the basics of error handling in VBA, and I really recommend that you check this one out first so that you have a basic understanding of what error handling is. Now you can download the code for this video in the description below. So let's go ahead and get started by looking at error raise statement. So in our normal code in VBA, what happens is when an error occurs, it gets sent to a label. So our on error go to eh means that if there's an error that occurs after the statement, then we're going to send it to a label in the sub called eh, which you can see below. And if the error doesn't happen, the code will just continue. It'll hit exit sub and it will leave before it reaches the error handling. So let's take a look. We step through the code like this. We're trying to put a letter in total and that's going to give us an error because total only holds long integers. And so the code jumps down and we can output the error description. So the error is an object that holds basically the details of an error. And this is filled by VBA when an error occurs. So the important things here is the description. We also have the number, which can be useful to identify the type of error at some stage. And it also has the source. Now the source isn't filled by VBA, or rather it is filled, but it's only filled with the project name, so it's not really that useful. But we can take advantage of this when we use our own error raise statements. So let's see how we can use error raise. So what error raise means is that we're creating our own errors. So imagine we have an application. And in the application, for example, 99 is invalid. So what we can do is we can say, if total equals 99, then, and what we can do is we can raise an error. So this, in other words, is creating an error, just like VBA created an error. So we use error raise, we put in the number. Now the number, this people often don't understand this, but actually it's quite simple. We have a range of numbers we can use for our errors and we define them ourselves in each application. So the number is basically VBA object error and then any number after that. So we can say our first error, so error total value will make VB object error plus one. And we have another error down, let's put that to the number VBA object error plus two and so on. So these are the values that we can use. And then at some stage we could compare, we could say if the error raised is equal to error total value. So we simply take this number and we put it in here. Now the source we can fill ourselves, and we can actually put in the name of our procedure. And then we can do the description. We can say invalid, say invalid total number. Now I'm just keeping it short here, but in a real world application, you'd obviously have a lot of detail. And then there's two more parameters to help file and help context. And these really hark from the, the days back in the 90s where we'd have a help file in Windows and we'd basically link to that. So I think most cases nowadays, we don't do that unless it's kind of an old style application that's been around for a long time. So let's see how this works. We step through the code. The total equals 99, so it goes to our error raise and you can see that it throws the error. That's so when an error is raised, in other languages kind of refer to it as being thrown. So the error gets thrown and you can see that it goes straight to the eh label. Okay, so now that we understand what the error object is, let's have a look at how it was filled. So you can see that description is invalid total number, which was the total number that we used. You can see that the number doesn't really make sense, but it's the number that we set using VB object error. And we, as I said, we can compare this using the variable name and you can see the sources use raise. So what we can do is we can use error raise to throw errors and basically the error handling we have in place will catch them. So that covers error raids. So let's look at the problem that we're trying to solve with error handling. So imagine we have an application like this. So it's very simple. So create report is the topmost sub and this calls read file, which calls open file. And then when that's finished, create report calls write data. Now the problem we can have here is that when we open the file, if there's some problem opening the file, we basically just want to bail out of the application. We don't want to go back to create report and continue on with the right data because it doesn't make sense. So let's have a look at the code and we can see exactly what I mean. 
So here you can see the create report. And the create report calls read, fi read file. The read file calls open file, which is down at the bottom. An open file is generating a file not found error, which you can see here. And then we go on to write data. So let's step through the code as this is quite an easy way to understand it. So we step through the code, we've got read file, and then this calls open file, and then this generates an error. Now error in VBA, when we use it like this, it generates an error. It basically just creates whatever the error is, a type mismatch or whatever. So the error happens and it goes down and we do the error handling. Now in this case, we're just giving out a message box, but we might want to clean up. We might want to close stuff down or whatever. And then we go back. So that's the message. Then we go back and we're in read file. We, we exit read file and then we go to write data. So this is the problem because after read file, already we've realized that we don't have the file to read. So our application should stop at this point. It's also similar to like, if your application was reading over a network or connecting to a website, and they weren't available, then you don't want your application to keep running. You want your application to basically say, the network is down, please reconnect to the network and try again. Or So you don't want your code to keep running. And the problem is, if the code keeps running, it can, ha it can have lots of errors because it's not in the state that you'd expect it to be in because it doesn't have the file it needs, doesn't have the network connection or, or whatever. And so the code will probably end up crashing or doing something worse. So you want to basically contain the problem. So again, we go into write data and we don't want to be here. So how do we avoid doing this? Well, we can avoid doing this by using a error handling strategy. So you can get the error handling strategy if you just go down to the description below the video and click on the link and you can download the code from there. So once you have the error handling file, you basically import it like this. You right click on modules and you select import file. And then you basically click on it like this. And now you have the error handling file. So let's double click on it. You see it has raise error and display error. If you don't understand these, don't worry about it because you're basically just gonna call them. You're not actually doing anything with them. So let's go ahead and use them in this code. So the first thing we want to do on any sub that isn't the top level, we want to put in a raise error. So we do a raise error like this. And then on the very top one, we want to do our display error. So this will display the actual error. So what we want to do as well is we want to change the source. So we want to set the source to be create report here. So that's the name of this sub. This is levels no EH. So let's change all of module one to levels no EH and we'll do this in the current module. So we place all four replacements and then we'll just go down and change the name within them all. And the last one is open file. So let's step through the code and see exactly what happens here. We step down, we go to read file, that calls open file, and then we hit the error. So when we hit the error, it jumps down to raise error. And what it does is it just starts to create the error source and the error description based on this. So when we raise error, it's basically taking the information and it's going to re-raise the error with that information. So that error will jump up and I'm just gonna skip through this. So that jumps up to the next level and at the next level it's read file. So it actually puts in this information here, adds that to the error description, and then it throws it up again. And let's just jump again. And this brings it to the top. And when it gets to the top, it displays the error. So let's run that on. And you can see what it says. The following error occurred, file not found, and it tells us where the error location is. It started an open file, that, which was called by read file, which was called by create report. So we know exactly the kind of line that was to the error. Now what's really useful in VBA, and a lot of people don't know this, is that you can use numbers. So you can use line numbers like this. If you've done basic back in the 80s or in the 90s when basic was on all the home computers, you remember typing numbers like this and numbers like this. Now to do this in VBA, 
is just really messy. It's just incredibly messy, but you can use different tools. So the tool I use is MZ Tools. Now it's not a free one, but there's, a, there's many different tools that do this, or you could write something yourself. So what it does is we basically right click and we say add line numbers. So we do this typically before we would release software to users. So we put in the line numbers. Then if we get the software back and we want to debug, what we do is we take them out. Now, so the line numbers are in, we run the code, and you can see that it tells us the line number with the error. Error location is line number 140, and that's in open file, which was called by read file, which was called by create report. So let's click OK. And if we go back and go down to 140, you can see this is exactly the line with the error. So you can see this is a very, very useful strategy indeed. So that's it. It's that simple to implement this error handling strategy. Really the raise error and the display error are doing all the heavy lifting. And all you've got to do is import that file into your code and then place the raise error and display error into your error handling. Now let's look at it from a slightly different perspective because it still mightn't be clear in your head what's happening. So what happens is when an error occurs, we basically raise the error until it reaches the top. So you can see in this illustration here, we raise the error from sub three to sub two. And what that does is when it gets to sub two, it adds more information. And then this goes on and on until it reaches the topmost. And at the topmost point, what happens is it displays the error. Now, if you want to check out my in-depth article on error handling, then simply Google VBA error handling and you'll see the complete guide to error handling in Excel VBA should appear near the top of the results. If you enjoyed this video, then please click on the like button as it really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you've got any questions or queries about this video, then please add them below. To get notified of my upcoming videos, you can click on the subscribe button. See you next time.